So we started by saying that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he was born in Babylon. Among other things that were said, but we're going to go with the saying that he was born in Babylon alayhi salatu was salam. And he grew up in a time when the people of Babylon were living very luxurious lives. And they were very ignorant. And at that time, there was a tyrant king whose name is Namruth ibn Kush, Nimrod ibn Kush. And his people were star worshippers and idol worshippers, and they also worshipped this tyrant. And Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, his people, they stayed on their blasphemy. They insisted on their blasphemy. He debated with the star worshippers. He debated with the idol worshippers. And he debated with the tyrant. And only a few people believed in him, alayhi salatu was salam. So when Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam, did not find his people accepting the guidance or believing in Allah and his messenger Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, then he wanted to immigrate. He wanted to leave that area and go to an area, to a land in which he would be able to worship Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala with no harassment, no problem, and, and in which he could call the people to Islam and perhaps he would find there in a new land people who are willing to listen. So Allah told us in Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 99, that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam said, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ He said, surely I will immigrate for the sake of my Lord. I will migrate to the land of Asham, to the stomping grounds of the prophets, the blessed land of Asham. For the sake of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Asham includes Palestine, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, and some of Turkey. And Allah ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 26, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوطٌ وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي that Lut, Lot, he believed in Abraham, that was his nephew, and he said, I am migrating to the place that is accepted by my Lord, to the place where I can worship my Lord and call the people to Islam. I am migrating to, an, to a place accepted to my Lord for the sake of my Lord. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Certainly, Allah, my Lord, He is Al-Aziz, the undefeated, Al-Hakim, the all-wise. So, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam, he migrated with his wife, Sarah, and Lot to the land of Asham. And Allah made Lot a messenger and sent him to the people of Sadum on the edges of Jordan and the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salatu was salam is known to us. So Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he left that land with whoever he left with and he went to the land of Asham. It was said that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam when he was in Asham at one point Life became hard because there was a severe drought. So he needed to move. So he went with his wife, Sarah, to Egypt. Unfortunately, in Egypt, there was a tyrant who had a horrible fetish, which was that if any beautiful woman came into his land, he would have her captured and brought to him so that he could do with her what he wanted. It was said that he would like to do that to a married woman. If a married woman came into his land, he would take her from her husband. He would have her captured and brought to him. So Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam, he encountered some of the workers of this tyrant. And they asked him about the woman with him. So he told them, she's my sister. He meant she's my sister in Islam. 
So he wasn't telling a lie, alayhi salatu wasalam, because lying is impossible for the prophets. It's not impossible that a prophet would do this, which is called tawriyah. It means to say something that has two meanings, a close meaning and a far meaning. And he intends the far meaning while the person who's hearing him thinks he means the close meaning. That's not impossible for a prophet to do, but lying is impossible for a prophet to do. So like we said in previous lessons, don't call tawriyah a lie. And at the same time, don't take advantage of people by using Tawriya on them all the time because they will dislike you and they, will, and they won't trust you. It has its place. And Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he did what he had to do to protect his wife. So he went back to his wife and he said to her, they are asking me who you are in relation to me and I told them that you are my sister. So do not belie me. Don't say other than what I said to you. He was afraid that if he told them she was his wife, that they would take her because this tyrant, he liked to take married women. And if it was said that it doesn't matter if they're, they're married or not, he just likes to take beautiful women, then he was afraid that they would kill him if he said, she's my wife that they would kill him to take his wife and keep her and never bring her back to him, just to get rid of him so that their tyrant king can have that woman for himself. So he said, she's my sister. They took her, and she was extremely beautiful. She had a very high level of beauty. It was said that Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, inherited his beauty from Sarah. So they brought her to that tyrant. And when he saw how beautiful she was, he could not resist, so he reached out to touch her. And while he was like that, Allah Ta'ala made his hand freeze and created pain in his hand so that he was not able to extend his hand to her and touch her. So he said to her, ask your Lord to release me and I will not harm you. So she made dua and Allah let his hand go back to the way it was. But he's so wicked and so wretched that he reached for her again. And then it happened again, even stronger. So again, he said, ask your Lord to release me and I will not harm you. And mashallah, in that, brothers and sisters, there's a big lesson. Because the human being, how often would the human being, for example, repent from a sin and then go back and do it again? Because his nafs. His nafs is strong, so even though he, he wanted to retract, but after that he goes back and he does it again. MashaAllah. I'm not saying that this person repented, I'm just drawing a similarity for you. That's why the best repentance is the repentance after which a person does not return to the sin. So, this man, he lost interest in Sarah. Alayhi salam. And he said to his people, you didn't bring me a woman, you brought me a devil. And he released her and even gave her a gift, which was a slave woman. The time while she was away from Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was praying. Because that's what the pious people do when they are in distress. And she, before she went, she made wudu. It's reported in the hadith that she made wudu. So that's evidence that there was wudu for the Muslims before the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the prayer of all the prophets also contained what? Standing, bowing, and prostrating. The format of our prayer is the format of the prayer of all the prophets. Don't you know, even in the Bible, in the stories of, some of the stories of the prophets that are in the Bible, there's indications that they were making wudu and, and praying, making salah, making sujood on carpets and all of that. It's mentioned in the Bible. MashaAllah. And who among the Jews and Christians is making sujood on carpets? Who's prostrating on carpets? It's in their own book. Who's praying upon their faces among them? None of them. So she came back with a slave woman. She said, good news Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala put the tyrant kafir to shame and we came back even with a gift which was that slave woman. 
Her name was Hajar. She was an Egyptian woman. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he returned to Palestine. He lived there with his wife and her slave woman. And at a certain point in time, she felt bad for her husband because she was old and barren, meaning she couldn't have children. And her husband, her husband didn't have any children. So she felt bad for him that he didn't have any children and that she couldn't give him any. So she gave him her slave woman as a gift. And from that slave woman, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he had his first son, Ismail. Ishmael. This is the correct saying that Ishmael was the son of Abraham from Hajar. They might call her in English Hagar or Hagar or something like that. H-A-G-A-R. Her name is Hajar in Arabic. But she wasn't an Arab, she was an Egyptian woman. It was said that after some time, the relationship between Hajar and Sarah became not easy, mashallah, because of the feelings that women tend to have, especially in certain circumstances. So Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he took Hajar and their son, Ismail, by the command of Allah wa ta'ala to Mecca, which at that time was just desert. Nothing was there. No plants, no buildings, no people. It was just desert. And at that time, Ismail, he was just a nursing baby, breastfeeding baby. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he took his son and his slave woman to that place and he left them under a big tree, he turned his back to them and left them there. And there was no one there, as we said, no people, nothing, yani like no crops, nothing to eat. He left them with a bag of dates and with some water and headed back towards Palestine. So when he turned his back to them and started walking away, then Hajar, she went after Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. She said, Ibrahim, where are you going? Where You're leaving us here in this place and there's no one to talk to, there's no one to stay up with, there's no company, nothing. And like that, she was going after him as he was walking away, saying what she was saying. How could you leave us here? There's no one here with us, etc. He wasn't responding to what she was saying. While he was walking away from her, he wasn't responding. Until she said to him, did Allah command you to do this? At that point, he spoke to her and he said, Naam, yes. So she said, with certainty, then we will not be lost. And then she went back to where he left her. And Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he turned towards the direction of where the Kaaba would be, and he made dua. He said, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. Rabbana liyuqimu salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim. Among what this verse means is, O oh Allah, our Lord, I have left my progeny in a valley that has no crops at the place of your sacred house. And he said in his dua, Oh Allah, guide towards them some people and provide them with fruits so that they can appreciate your endowments upon them. So Hajar, Um Ismail, 
she stayed with her son where Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam put them. And she started nursing her son Ismail and drinking from the water that Ibrahim left for them until the water ran out. Then she got thirsty and then her son got thirsty and he started crying after a while and then he started squirming because he's so thirsty and she looked at him, she saw him squirming and she saw that her little baby is suffering. So she walked away from him because she could not bear the sight of seeing her little baby suffering and squirming from thirst in the desert. And she started looking for water. And the closest mountain to her was the mountain As-Safa. So she climbed that mountain. And she turned into the direction of the valley looking for someone. And she didn't see anyone. So she went down from Safa and she went across the valley with effort, like she's walking hard, striving, until she got to another mountain, which is called Al Marwa. And then she went up that mountain and she looked and she didn't find anyone. So then she went back down that mountain and went towards a Safa. She went up that mountain and then like that, she kept going back and forth between these mountains seven times. Then when she went up on the mountain of Al Marwa, the last time, she said, if there's someone there, I heard you. Help us if you can help us. And then she saw an angel and he was Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. And with his foot, he stomped on the ground and the well of Zamzam sprung up out of the ground. And so then what did she do? She started scooping and working on the ground as this water was springing up so that the water settled into a pool. And Jibreel said to her, alayhi salatu was salam, fear not, surely Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has here at this location a house and he pointed to a dune, a sand dune. He said, this house, meaning this place of worship, shall be built, constructed by this son of yours and his father. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about Hajar that had she not made the water into a pool, it would have flowed over the earth like a stream. And then the people would have benefited from it like that by the water flowing over the earth like a stream, but she didn't do that. She made it into a pool, so that's what happened. And she drank from the Zamzam water, her thirst was quenched, and she nursed her son, Ismail, and she thanked Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So what happened then? the birds started coming. So when there were birds in the area, there was a tribe of Arabs who saw that the birds were flocking in a particular area. So they said, there must be water there. So they went and lo and behold, they found in the middle of the desert, a woman and a baby and a pool of water. So they asked for her permission to settle there. And she said, you can settle here, but do not dominate the water. And they agreed that they wouldn't do that. And they settled there. And Ismail, alayhi salatu was salam, he grew up with those people, the tribe of Jorhum. He learned Arabic from them. And he married among them. And from then, ever since then, people had settled there. And it became a populated area. You might not know, but it is said that this story is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, but it's not very clear. For us to know this story and its details, and then to see what's in the Bible, I, I looked at it. It looks clear that it was perverted out of the Bible. It was made very obscure. So it's not very obvious where they were. Uh, but they for sure, they were in a desert for sure. 
the water in the Bible, the water sprang out of the ground for her, her and her son. Um, and also there is a town in the Bible. The name of that town is Becca, which is one of the names of Mecca in the Quran, actually. In the Quran, Allah refers to Mecca as Becca. And there is in the Bible the mentioning of the town of, of Becca. Uh, so anyway, actually, it looks for one who knows this story, then yes, the story of Prophet Ibrahim and uh, Hajar and Ismail being in the desert and the building of the Kaaba is in the Bible, but they made it very obscure. So they say something like Abraham built an altar. He went there and he built an altar there. Anyway, that book is not evidence. Um, just mentioning that for uh, for your information because it's interesting. It's better for you if you want to talk to a Jew or a Christian or any non-Muslim, it's better for you to talk about mental proofs, to give them mental proofs, okay? Because if you want to start talking to them about what's in their book, it's very likely you're going to get yourself into a long conversation that you don't want to get into. Tayyip. So... Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam, the son of Abraham, he grew up with this uh, tribe of Arabs called Jurhum. He learned Arabic from them and he became a young man among them. And they liked him. They liked his manners and, and everything about him. And they gave one of their daughters in marriage to him, alayhi salatu wassalam. And Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, after going back to Palestine, he used to come and visit Ismail and Hajar from time to time. And among the things that happened with Ibrahim and Ismail, alayhi salatu wassalam, is what Allah told us in Surat as safat starting at Ayah 99, Allah says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And Abraham said, Surely I am immigrating for the sake of my Lord. رَبِّ هَبْلِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ O oh my Lord, give me the gift of a pious child. فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ And so, Allah gave him the good tidings of a boy who would be knowledgeable and deliberating. And then when that boy reached an age at which he could strive with his father, his father said to him, Ya bunayya inni ara fi al-manami anni adbahuka fanzur madha tara He said, O oh my son, I received the revelation in my dream and I have seen in my dream that I am slaughtering you. I am to slaughter you. So tell me, what do you think about that? He wasn't asking him just merely for his opinion, just like that. When he said, Look into that. What do you think about that? That's not because he wanted to know what's his personal opinion about his father having to slaughter him. Rather, this is a conversation between two people who are very highly religious and knowledgeable and very, very faithful. And this is a man talking to his son who is very, very intelligent and keen and smart and patient. So his asking him, what do you think about that, was not from the perspective of him just curious of what his opinion was. Rather, this is an indication of what was just mentioned in the previous ayah. Didn't Allah tell us in the 101st ayah? That فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ Allah gave Abraham the glad tidings of a boy who would be deliberating. That means he's very smart and he thinks very well. So what's an indication of his being deliberating? 
like what happened in this story. So Prophet Ibrahim said to him, He told him, what do you think about that? I have to slaughter you, so tell me, what do you see? He said, Oh my father, do as you were commanded. And you will find me, inshallah, among those who are patient. And his son even gave him instructions. He gave him suggestions. He told him, when you slaughter me, make sure the blade is sharp so that I don't suffer. And also, tie me tight and slaughter me from behind so that my blood will not spill onto your clothing and then you go back home and my mother will see my blood on your clothing and her heart will be broken so that's how he was a deliberating one and he was a youngster mashallah he wasn't a, a full-grown man yet he was a youngster still may allah give us sons and daughters who are like that i mean uh, we need to raise them right though those were special people, Ibrahim and Ismail. Those were special people. We're normal people, mashallah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless our families and to bless our children. So then, when Abraham and his son submitted to the command of Allah, and Abraham laid his son down on his temple so that he could slaughter him, it was reported that he ran the blade over Ismail's throat, and then the blade flipped. Because you know how you have a blade, like one side is sharp and the other side is not sharp? So when he went to run the blade over his neck, it flipped so that the sharp side went away to the other side, and the dull side was on his throat. And he kept trying, and it kept flipping. And it was said that he ran the blade over his neck, the sharpened blade over his neck, and despite that, it did not cut. Whatever it was that happened, it's not mentioned here in this ayah. Ismail has said to Ibrahim, what's wrong? Because he's still alive. So Ibrahim told him, it won't cut. So Ismail said to him, then stab. If it won't cut, then stab. So Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was going to jab the blade into the throat of his son but the angel came and stopped him oh abraham you have fulfilled the dream you've done enough stop don't go any further it was said that had prophet ibrahim carried out that command it would have become a practice among human beings to slaughter their own sons. <inaudible> like that, Allah Ta'ala rewards the good doers. <inaudible> Surely this was certainly a clear test. A clear test of religious devotion and faith. Because who has the strength to do something like that? To slaughter his own son. In the story of Ibrahim and his family, there's a big lesson for the believers because they were people who were very obedient to Allah Ta'ala. Ibrahim was commanded to slaughter his son. He didn't say, oh my Lord, can you give me another task? Can it be something else? He didn't say that. He went to go do it. And he tried. Also, it was reported about Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, that Allah commanded him to circumcise himself. He was 80 years old. He was 80 years old when he was commanded to circumcise himself. What did he do? Did he waver? Did he say, oh boy. <laughs> he did not. MashaAllah. He did it immediately. He took a sharp tool. Immediately he circumcised himself. That's obedience. That's an example for us. And Allah Ta'ala gave Abraham a ransom instead of slaughtering his son. Instead of slaughtering his son, Allah gave Abraham something like a ransom 
instead of the slaughter of his son, which was a large ram that had been grazing in paradise. It was said that that's the same ram that Abel, the son of Adam, slaughtered when his sacrifice was accepted. You remember the story of Cain and Abel. The two brothers gave a sacrifice. One was accepted and the other was not. It was said that this ram that Ibrahim والسلام, was given as a ransom for his son was the very ram that Habil ibn Adam slaughtered. And it was said, other than that, that that was a, a ram that had been grazing in paradise for 40 years. So it was very large. The Jews say that that was Ishaq, Isaac. And some of the scholars even said that that was Ishaq, not Ismail. We are taking the saying that this story happened with Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam. He is called Ismail al-Zabih. Al-Zabih means the sacrifice. The one who was the sacrifice alayhi salatu wassalam. Prophet Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam, he grew up. And Allah Ta'ala bestowed prophethood upon him. And then sent him to the tribes of the Arabs. He was sent, Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam, to the tribes of the Arabs and to the Amaliq and to the people of Al-Yemen. And he called them to Islam. And this is why the Arabs know about Abraham and Ishmael. Don't you know from our religion as Muslims, that the Prophet ﷺ was dealing with pagan Arabs who, to a certain extent, believed in Abraham and Ismail, meaning they believed that they truly existed and they thought of them as great men. And they claimed to be following the religion of, of Ismail and Ibrahim. So in a way, those old Arabs were similar to the Jews and the Christians. Because the Jews and the Christians, there were prophets sent, and then those Jews and Christians, they perverted the teachings of those prophets. Also, prophets came to the Arabs, and among them was Ismail, alayhi salatu wassalam. So, they perverted the teachings of Abraham and Ismail while they claimed to still be adhering to their way. It was said that Prophet Ismail, alayhi salatu wassalam, he married a woman from the tribe of Jurhum. We mentioned that. So, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, he used to come and visit Ismail from time to time. So one time he came to Ismail's house and Ismail wasn't there. He was out providing for his family. So he came to Ismail's house and he came to the door. His wife came. Ismail's wife came to the door. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, he gave her salam and he asked her, where's Ismail? She said, he's out for us. He's out uh, providing for us. So he asked her, how are things? She said, oh, life is hard. It's rough out here, et cetera, et cetera, like this. She was complaining. So Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, he said to her, Give your husband my salam and say to him to change his the footstep the footstep of his door. Like the footstep at his door, to change the footstep at his door. And then he left. So Ismail came back. He had a hunch that someone was there. So he said to his wife, Did someone come? She said, Yes, actually, an old man came. He said to her, What did he do she said well he asked how we were he said what did you tell him she said i told him that things are hard and it's rough etc he said okay did, did he tell you anything she said yes he said for me to give you his salam and to tell you to change the footstep of your door he said that was my father and he commands me to divorce you Go to your family. And he divorced her. And then he married another woman. Alayhi salatu wassalam. 
So another time, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he came. And again, Ismail was out providing for his family. And he came to the door and she came and he gave salam. He said, where's Ismail? She said, he's out providing for us. He said, how are things? She said, alhamdulillah, things are fine. He said, what do you eat? She said, we eat meat. He said, what do you drink? She said, we drink water. And then he made dua for Allah to bless their meat and to bless their water. And he said, give Ismail my salam and say to him to keep his footstep of his door. And then he left. So when Ismail came, he said to his wife, was someone here? She said, yes, a nice looking old man came. And he said this and that. He said to her, did he command you with anything? She said, yes, he told me to give you his salam and to keep the footstep of your daughter. He said, that was my father and he tells me to keep you. So, mashallah, he kept that woman. And Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was absent for however long he was absent. And one day, Ismail, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was sitting under a tree sharpening an arrow when his father came. So he looked up and he saw his father and then he was so happy he missed his father and his father missed his son. So they embraced each other like father and son would do. And he said to his son Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala commands me to build al-Ka'aba and I need your help. So then he helped his father construct the Kaaba. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah ayahs 127 through 129 When Abraham and Ishmael built the foundations of the house, when they raised the foundation of the sacred house رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا They said, Oh, our Lord, accept our good deeds. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Surely you, you are السَّمِيعُ The all-hearing, العليم, the all-knowing. رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ Oh, our Lord, make both of us Muslims of yours. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لك. And from our progeny, make a Muslim nation. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا And show us what are the acts of worship that you command us to do and forgive us. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Surely you are a tawwab, the one who forgives Ar-Rahim, the merciful. Rabbana wada'ath feehim rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatik. Our Lord, send to these people a messenger from amongst themselves who recites to them your verses. Yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumu al-kitaba wal-hikmata wa yuzakkihim. Send to them a messenger from amongst themselves who recites your verses to them and teaches them the book and the wisdom, which is the prophetic sunnah. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Surely you are the undefeated, the all-wise. And so they built the Kaaba and Prophet Ibrahim, after he finished building the Kaaba, Allah Ta'ala commanded him, to call the people to Hajj. So he said, how would I call the people to Hajj? What should I say? 
So Allah commanded him to say, Ya ayyuhan nas, kutiba alaykumul hajj. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he did that, he stood upon a stone and he called out, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, kutiba alaykumul hajj. Hajj has been made obligatory upon you. And Allah made, as it was said, he made everyone in heavens and earth hear Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And it was said that even the babies in the wombs of their mothers and the semen in the spines of the men, when they heard the call of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, they all said, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Which means we obey you Allah, we obey. And as for Ibrahim's wife, Sarah, she reached menopause. She became an old woman who reached menopause. And so she had no hope to have a baby. And she was a barren woman. So she didn't have any children. And it wasn't until she was 90 years old that Allah wa ta'ala gave her her own son. So it happened that three angels came to destroy the towns of Lut. And before they got to the towns of Lut, they stopped at Abraham, alayhi salatu was salam. And he thought they were guests. So he prepared some food for them. And then when he, when he presented the food to them, he saw that they had no interest in that food whatsoever. He thought they were humans. He didn't know they were angels. They had no interest in his food whatsoever. So when he saw that, he became suspicious of them. Because who comes to your house... And then when you offer them food, they're not interested in eating your food unless they were enemies who have come to do you ill. And that story is mentioned in Surah Al-Dhariyat, ayahs 24 through 30. Allah Ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash rajim Hal ataka hadithu daifi Ibrahim al mukramin O oh, Muhammad, was it revealed to you the story of the guests of Abraham, the honored guests of Abraham? When they entered in on him and they said, Salam. He said, Salam. He said, You are people who are unknown to me. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِعِجِلٍ ثَمِينٍ So then he went to his family and he prepared for them the meat of a fat baby cow. Veal, isn't it? Veal is baby cow meat. He barbecued it for them. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ قَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ Then he presented it to them and he said to them, Why don't you eat? But they had no interest in his food. They did not reach for his food. So then he was afraid of them, meaning he was suspicious of them. They said to him, fear not. And they gave him the news of a child to come who would be a knowledgeable scholar. That's because all the prophets are scholars. And his wife, when she heard that, she came and she smacked her own face and she said, I'm a barren old woman. I would have a baby and I'm a barren old woman. They said to her, that's what your Lord says. Surely he is the all-wise and the all-knowing. In Surah Hud, Allah told us that the angel said to her, They said, are you surprised of the command of Allah that Allah Ta'ala has ordained for you to have a baby after you became a barren old woman? Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahlal bayt. They said to her, 
May the mercy of Allah and his blessings be upon you. They made dua for her. Innahu hamidun majid. Surely Allah is the one who is praised and glorified and exalted. And so Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he had another son, and his name was Ishaq Isaac. Ishaq ibn Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah As-Safat, وَبَشَّرُنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِّنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah gave Ibrahim the good news of Isaac. Some people say Isaac, I-S-A-A-C. That's how you spell it in English. Some people say Isaac, Isaac or Isaac. And maybe they might say it in another way also in English. وَبَارَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ إِسْحَاقُ And Allah blessed Abraham and blessed Isaac. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا مُحْسِنٌ وَظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ مُبِينٌ And among their offsprings were those who did good and those who clearly wronged themselves. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. From the descendants of Abraham and Isaac. And as for Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam, he had two sons, and they were twins, Al-Is and Ya'qub. Al-Is and Ya'qub. When Ibrahim died alayhi salatu was salam, his two sons buried him, Ismail and Ishaq, and it's reported that Ibrahim had other sons also besides them. It was said that among the sons of Ibrahim was one whose name was Median. That's the name of that town where Shu'aib is from, Median. So they buried their father, alayhi salatu was salam, in the place that is known today by Tawatur. The grave of Prophet Ibrahim is definitively known to be correct spot of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam, in Palestine. The Muslims visit that and even the Jews visit that place. And... When Ishaq died, alayhi salatu was salam, his sons buried him with his father, which was their grandfather. And as for Ismail, alayhi salatu was salam, it is said that he died in Mecca, and he was buried there, alayhi salatu was salam. And as for that tyrant king, Namrud ibn Kush, Nimrod ibn Kush, it was said that he challenged God with his own army. And he assembled his army. Allah So Allah wa ta'ala sent to his army a massive swarm of mosquitoes. And those mosquitoes, they just ate his army alive. They didn't do anything but leave their bones. They ate their meat and their blood and left them left bones. And that's it. And that kafir, he was not killed in that particular incident. But one of those mosquitoes went into his nose, went up his nostril, into his head, and ate from his brain. And he stayed like that for 40 days in torture. It was said that that mosquito was nourishing on his brain until it became as big as a mouse. And that man was in so much agony that he started hitting himself in the head at first from the pain. And it got worse and worse. When he couldn't do it himself, when he wasn't able to hit himself hard enough, he would command other people to hit him in the head. Until he reached a point where he had people smash his head with hammers, hitting him with very hard objects to relieve him from the pain in his head. The greatest thing that someone could do for him and the person that he would love the most is someone who would hit him upside his head with a hammer to relieve him from the pain that he was suffering from, from that bug in his head. Until he eventually died. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he gave Abraham a great honor, something that lasted for Abraham throughout the ages. Salamun ala Ibrahim which is that the believers 
of the earth and the sky throughout the ages, they say, Salamun ala Ibrahim. Peace be upon Abraham. Like that, Allah rewards the good doers. Surely Abraham was among Allah's believing slaves. That's that ends on Ayah one eleven. Surah to Safat.